Have you ever spent hours of your life editing a video, sent it off to a client, but still doubted your own editing skills? If you're anything like me, you're constantly scrutinizing your videos and wondering if they're good enough. Well, in this video, I've created a tool for you to test where you are on your editing journey from editing noob to editing ninja and find out how good of an editor you really are. Big thanks to Riverside for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. I remember looking at my timeline after one of my first ever edits on Premiere Pro, and I was kind of confused at what I'd just done. Everything looked messy and unorganized and I struggled to find any order on my timeline. And this is where color coding your clips comes in. You can mark sections of your video and asset types by highlighting assets on your timeline, right clicking, selecting label and choosing from one of the colors. I personally use this to color code different sections of videos as well as color coding images, videos, animations or music. But can you spot the massive issue with our video here? I watch a lot of editors videos and one thing that screams to me that they're only just getting started on their editing journey is how they cut their videos incorrectly. When someone in the video is talking, always make your cuts right after the last syllable. Don't cut mid-breath or the cut will sound very harsh and abrupt. And the same applies to the second clip too, cut it before the first syllable. So the two clips line up seamlessly and there's no breath in between. This next point you need to have mastered before moving past the level one stage of editing. But quickly before I reveal that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video that I think you'll find incredibly useful, Riverside. Riverside allows you to create studio quality videos and then edit them in an all-in-one podcast and video platform. Let me give you a quick run through of how it works because it's such a useful tool to have in your arsenal if you're doing anything in the creator economy. I've been using it recently to host video interviews and live events because with using other video call tools the quality of the video recordings is always awful and as a video editor and creator it used to give me alarm bells when I checked the call recording and it'd be lagging glitching in 720p for example. Riverside fixes this problem altogether by actually allowing you to to record video calls, interviews, webinars, podcasts natively on your device. So there's no lagging or glitching, all in up to 4K quality. And to top it all off, you can actually then take these high quality recordings, download the video and audio tracks separately to edit them yourself, or use Riverside's built-in editor, which has text-based editing, and you can even automatically clip up the best parts for social media. Once I've hopped off the call or webinar, I can see all the different tracks that it's recorded, as well as the transcript. And if we click go to editor, we can automatically remove all the silences, edit the video using text-based editing, which is actually so good that I've been uploading videos not recorded in Riverside just to use it. And then Riverside can use the transcript to automatically clip up the video, add very accurate captions, and then make social media clips as well. We can see here, we can change the captions to fit with our brand colors and look nice and presentable. And if there's any small discrepancies or errors in the auto-generated captions, we can of course change them here. And one thing I was really impressed with was their brand new shown notes summarizer which uses AI to summarize your entire call into a summary key takeaways and even timestamps and I've been adding these into my program editors Academy for students to not only re-watch live events and weekly calls on Riverside whenever they like but to also have the calls summaries and key takeaways here too all in all Riverside is a super impressive tool and well worth having in your arsenal as a video editor or content creator and you can hit the first link in the description to sign up and try Riverside for free you can even get 15% off your individual plan when you choose to upgrade with coupon code SAMPDONE. So by now, we hopefully all know about moving assets around with the effect control panel here, and maybe even keyframes. But doing these standard keyframes can make your assets move in a jolty and robotic way. To fix this, we can actually add the ease out effect to the first keyframe and an ease in effect to the second keyframe here, which affects the speed at which this asset now travels. So it eases out from the first keyframe and gradually eases into the second keyframe. But wait, don't do this up here. You can actually move assets around with the transform effect, which is exactly the same as doing it up here in the effect controls. Apart from if we turn the shutter angle up here, it actually gives the asset a nice natural motion blur as it moves. If you knew all of that, congratulations, you've passed level one. Let's move on to level two, which is where we can really put our skills to the test and get even closer towards editing ninja status. Starting off level two, I've spoken to a few advanced editors about this and most of them still have had no idea you could do this. They've genuinely never seen this feature before. To mark a specific point in our video, we can hit the M key. But what most people don't realize is that you can hold Alt and drag these markers to mark an entire section. But speaking of markers, this next tip is an easy way to show whoever's watching that you're a skilled video editor. Let's drag a music track in here and hit M to drop a marker on each beat of the song. We can then highlight the clips that we want to add to our timeline, click automate to sequence, and it's matched our video 
with the markers and therefore with the beat of the music. But speaking of music, let's look into an overlooked trick to level your audio and make sure your audio is always the right level. So firstly, we need to bring up the essential sound window. Then we can select our audio track, tell Premiere Pro it's dialogue by clicking dialogue and under loudness, we can select auto match. This next insanely simple trick is ignored by a ton of editors and it can make your workflow a lot smoother. Firstly, if we drag in some more footage, we can see that because this footage is 4K, it hasn't lined up to our video and we're going to have to manually adjust it each time this happens. To fix this, we can head up to Premiere Pro, hit settings and then media and turn default media scaling to set to frame size to always make any assets that you drag in the perfect size. But let's say we've edited these clips a bit more and they're now scattered across your timeline, but you want to add effects to all of those clips and instead of applying the effect and copying it over to all of them, simply click the source clip and apply the effect to all of the same footage on our timeline. If you passed all of those five tips, congratulations, you've graduated level two and let's dive into the final level, level three. Back when I started video editing, I remember editing my first video that wasn't a talking head video and I was super confused about the actual storyline. I didn't have a storyboard or anything laid out for me, so I just kind of guessed and put the footage in chronological order. Big mistake. Storytelling is incredibly important for video editing. So even if the story seems simple, it might be worth planning out or storyboarding your video so you can get a better idea of the exact storyline. This will help you to not just put the footage in chronological order and hope it's right, but to use the footage to tell a story. But speaking of storytelling, this next tip is the most important tip for turning your video from bland into moving. If your video suddenly starts becoming sad or emotional, the last thing you want is to have your lo-fi hip-hop soundtrack to still be playing in the background. The goal with adding music is to emphasize and complement the intended emotion. Don't be afraid to use lots of tracks and fade them in and out, but always match the specific emotion portrayed at the time. A step up from this is knowing your audience. If your video is being posted to an audience of kids, you can get away with using music to emphasize the emotion that might be seen as over the top to an older audience. You're not going to want to use a Mr. Beast style edit for a video advertising an old people's home, for example. So have a think about the intended emotion of your video, hopeful, sad, excited, motivational, and make sure the music that you choose matches these emotions throughout, even if it's subtle, and of course, bear in mind your audience. With all that said, I know how it feels to spend hours and hours working on an edit, but my life pretty much changed when I started implementing the next thing. If you want to create amazing videos you're passionate about, the last thing you want to do is burn out because you're editing for days at a time. Don't be afraid to strip back to just the important parts of the editing process that actually make a difference. Edit sustainably. Perfectionism is a superpower. I'm a perfectionist, but don't get caught up in the details all the time and prioritize what matters. Thank you to Riverside for sponsoring this video. Again, you can use code SAMPDUNN for 15% off when you upgrade. And thanks for watching.